Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today we're going to be talking about the top 10 things that are on my prepping wish list. These are things I'll probably never be able to afford, but you never know. This list is mostly comprised of various buildings, various structures, and different types of vehicles. But there's also a few big ticket items in there that I would love to have as well. So let's take a look at my list and let me know in the comments section afterwards what you would add to this list. Let's go. All right, so number 10 on my list, and it should probably be number one because it's the most realistic and probably the most practical, and that is land. This day and age, buying quality land is probably one of the most practical investments you can make with your money in order to preserve your wealth and also to empower your self-reliant lifestyle. You're going to have a lot more freedom than when you live in the city, although there are still numerous regulations and building codes that you're going to have to abide by depending on the county or rural municipality that you live in. But the ability to get familiar with a piece of land before the crap hits the fan and to know all of its limitations, all of its strengths and weaknesses, to get a sense of who your neighbors are, to have a strategy to fortify that property if need be, and really just get well established before something happens. That's an absolute must in my books, which is why it's on my wish list. And another reason why it's so far back is because it's probably something that I will achieve in the not so far off future. So it's not really a wish. It's something which is well within everybody's grasp. You're one Google search away and of course many pennies saved from getting your own nice little plot of paradise. Number nine is a Harvest Right freeze dryer. If you're unaware, a freeze dryer is gonna allow you to preserve most types of food for up to 30 years while retaining around 90% of the nutrient value. And because the freeze drying process doesn't degrade the cell walls of the food, when you do finally reconstitute it, the texture is almost nearly identical to non-freeze dried food. As some of you know, I already own a Harvest Right medium sized freeze dryer, but ideally I would have the larger version and I would have the new vacuum pump that they sell, which is much, much quieter. And it's no maintenance, meaning you don't have to clean the oil like the old vacuum pump, which costs around 300 bucks. So a large freeze dryer or the scientific version, which costs around $10,000. This is a wish list, so why not? That would put you on the professional prepping level for sure. All right, next is a survival bike, one of these e-bikes that are made for hunters. There's numerous different bikes that are coming out right now, which are very rugged in their build, and they're basically built for hunters. Now, these bikes range from $5,000 to $7,000, and usually they have the fat bike tires. These are the only bikes that are approved by All-American Prepper, ones that do not require you to pedal because pedaling is for pussies so these bikes are powerful enough that they're they're going to be really fast very high wattage some of them are up to 5,000 watts and they got long run times they got a lot of power uh, they can pull a game card like i said before they're made to be very durable so definitely this is up on my list and of course they're going to be much much quieter than accessing an area via quad or something like that in fact it's probably going to be quieter than walking into a region so definitely a hunting e-bike is up there on my list all right number seven is going to be some kind of amphibious six by six personnel carrier type vehicle which can go on land or on sea uh, something which of course has armor something which could transport a lot of goods there's so many cool variations of this type of thing out there now within this class i'm going to add other military vehicles as well like something like a deuce and a half or maybe an armored humvee something that's made to be bulletproof is going to haul a lot of gear and as a must it must have non-pneumatic tires the tires are always the achilles heel of any vehicle. I know there's a lot of run flat tires out there, but I would rather have something which you're never gonna have to worry about that at all. With the non-pneumatic tires, uh, they can get shot at, uh, parts of it can be compromised, and it's still gonna function well. So in a perfect world, the ideal variant of one of these vehicles would have some kind of multi-fuel engine like the Deuce and a Half, which can pretty much eat anything and convert it into raw torque and power as far as i know it'll basically take anything that's flammable now when the non-renewables run out 
that's when you're going to have to look into something like a gasifier. And if you're like me and you're in the boreal forest and you have nothing but trees at your disposal, then you might as well convert that into something which can be used by your tactically cancerous monstrosity of a post-collapse bug out vehicle. All right, so number six is an earth roamer. So earth roamers start at around $280,000. And I'm sure if you threw in enough bells and whistles, you could probably quickly bring that uh, to a million dollars for one of these things. But man, I would love an earth roamer. If you haven't seen these vehicles yet, go and check them out. Some of the features of these things include, of course, uh, all wheel drive. It's built on heavy duty Ford uh, F550 chassis. So it's massive. It's got a huge turbo diesel engine. It can haul 95 gallons of diesel. That's like 400 liters of fuel. It can hold 85 liters of water, has a 900 mile trip range, a 12,000 watt hour battery bank. You also have 13,000 watts of onboard solar power. You have a non noisy generator. Oh, I mean, the list goes on of the things and everything is intelligently designed so that you know you can cram the most amount of stuff in the least amount of space. You have water system, you have a washroom, you have gun racks. You got a bedroom, a bathroom, a kitchen, dining room, everything you need. You got a barbecue on the back that comes down. This is just one of the most amazing vehicles ever. All right, so next up is this solar powered yacht. If you guys ever watched Fear the Walking Dead, uh, the first season, the last episode, probably the best episode of the series, in my opinion, where they find the yacht and they venture off while the world is burning behind them on the shore. This boat, it's actually not a yacht, it's it's called a catamaran, meaning it has two hulls, which of course lend to its increased stability. Now, I'm not sure about the payload capacity of this thing or catamarans in general, but all I can say is that the company is boasting that this thing can basically run forever on its own. It has some lithium powered batteries, it has 15 kilowatts, of solar panels so not only will it provide enough power for itself to run during the day it'll also provide enough power that's stored in the batteries to run all night and this includes supplying electricity to all your appliances overnight and during the day as well now it does have a backup diesel generator which you're going to want on there of course i don't know what the capacity of that is but uh, as you can see here it's designed for yuppies but of course, as preppers, what we would do is we would gut this whole thing and, you know, we would set up some turrets on there. We would reinforce it with some armor. We would try to convert as much of that unused space as possible, the space where you could, of course, store supplies. You could probably even store supplies within the hulls. But this thing is just freaking awesome. I'm sure it's well beyond uh, something I'm ever going to be able to afford. But I shouldn't say that. You never know. I might win the lottery someday. Now, obviously, military watercraft are going to be preferred from a tactical perspective. They're probably going to be able to go a lot faster also. But this thing is quiet. That's another thing. If you were passing by uh, a coastal area by night and you wanted to keep a low profile, this would allow you to do that because just like a Tesla vehicle, this thing is virtually silent. I think if you could take the best of some lighter military watercraft and mix it with something like this, that would probably be the ultimate bug out boat. Sure, bigger is always better, you know, especially if you had some deployable uh, jet skis or something on that, if you had to fight off some pirates or, you know, or just had like a mounted 50 cal, man, that would be fun. But uh, to have something that's a little bit smaller, there's something to say about that too. So anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments about that one. Really interested in uh, the bug out boat stuff. Because as far as I've seen, most bug out boats, including my own, have been pretty small. They've, they've been like coracles, kayaks, you know, fishing boats, small things like that that you really couldn't live out of for a long period of time. But, you know, I mean, if you could fish from the sea... Uh, you essentially wouldn't ever really have to go to land much at all uh, maybe just to do some scavenging runs and you could you know keep as much of a safe distance as you wanted all right next is the incas sentry armored personnel carrier and uh this is so cool i'm pretty sure they're probably well beyond the price range of most people i'm not really sure who they are servicing probably more so government agencies i'm pretty sure you need a permit especially in Canada, to own something like this. But man, this thing is tricked out for the Mad Max universe. We're talking 151 liter fuel capacity, 6.7 liter diesel V8, 362 horsepower, four wheel drive, of course, 
it's armor to the gills it has all sorts of you know lrad stuff and uh, law enforcement, uh, crowd control deterrence, you can put a plow on there. I mean, this thing is built for zombies. It's got night vision as 360 gun port coverage. It has an escape hatch in case you were overwhelmed by the undead. Got your winch on there, you have a wide field of view. You have ballistic glass, which is going to stop a moderate caliber round. 360 field of vision with external cameras. And this company actually makes a variety of armored vehicles. They'll take any vehicle platform, like you can get a Toyota Sequoia, a Forerunner. They got the Land Cruiser, the Jeep Grand Cherokee, Range Rover. Mostly SUVs is what they're tricking out here and uh, armoring. They can armor any type of sedan. They can armor Mercedes, Camrys, uh, a lot of Toyotas. So their standard armoring offers protection against high velocity rounds and even a uh, grenade detonation below the vehicle's floor. So pretty heavy duty stuff. And of course there is run flat devices, but once again, not as ideal as the non-pneumatic tires. There's heavy duty wheels, a fire suppression system, heavy duty brakes and components, lightweight armoring package. This one, what I might do is actually contact the company and see if they want to do anything with me on this. Uh, but I'm assuming that uh, this is still going to be well, well beyond uh, what I can afford and, and probably not worth their time because, you know, these guys are obviously a multi-million dollar business. They got some really kick-ass vehicles on that website. so. Go and check it out. All right, so next, and probably this one should be number one, but I'm gonna put it at number three only because there's no way in hell I could ever afford number one or number two. But this one I think would actually be within some people's grasp, and it's an Atlas Survival Shelter. My buddy Ron over at Atlas Survival Shelters, uh, we're gonna be doing some collaborations at some point down the road. And uh, he makes uh, bunkers, he supplies uh, many different countries with bunkers, celebrities, various well-to-do types who are not taking a risk and leaving their security to government. They're taking matters into their own hands and they just build a variety of really cool bomb shelters. And he really knows his stuff. I would definitely encourage you to go and check out his channel these guys really know what they're doing in the construction of these bunkers and they're building them uh, for a serious purpose i mean the purpose that they're building them for is not taken lightly at all and they're actually really nice looking bunkers also so hopefully down the road we'll be doing some uh, collaborations with atlas they do have their main factory in california but they're also going to be opening another factory in texas in 2019 so business is most certainly booming. If you're interested in getting a shelter, contact me before you contact them and I may be able to get you a bit of a discount on that shelter. As far as I know, these shelters start at around the $20,000 mark and I'm pretty sure you can go as big as you want. So, I mean, the sky is really the limit on how much you want to spend. They will build it for you. A lot of times they build these into the foundation uh, before the houses are even built. So if you're interested in getting one of these, contact me at CanadianPrepper at Hotmail.com or CanadianPreparedness.com and we will definitely try to hook you up with a better deal. So I really look forward to seeing Ron's channel uh, blow up on YouTube. He recently had a viral video, which I think is long since overdue considering the stuff that he does and just the personality that he brings to his videos. He's got a lot of personality. He has his own TV show. So I'm quite certain that his YouTube channel is going to take off, but go and subscribe to his channel if you get a chance and check it out. If we're talking about a prolonged grid down scenario, like a full-blown EMP, World War III style, we're going back to the medieval era, it's Mad Max with no bullets type situation, you're going to want a fortress. This is going to be a luxury which is more so limited to Europe. They're going to be much more fire resistant. They're going to be able to withstand some small arms fire. And they were built for the purpose of being fortified because, you know, they were built in a time when your security wasn't guaranteed. I mean, if you were sacked, then nobody around you was going to hear you for 
hundreds of miles. Even if he had a personal relationship with the king, it would take his army a long time to get there. So you would be overrun by raiders if you did not design your building to be people proof. And that's basically what a castle is. So a castle is definitely up there on my list. Now in the same vein, because I am running out of spots, next would be an island. And there's a website also, in addition to the website that you can go and buy a castle on, there's a website that you can go and uh, buy an island if you want. There's a lot of islands for sale. Now some of them are kind of crappy. Uh, you can buy islands all throughout Canada. There's thousands of islands in Canada, believe it or not. We have a lot of water here, uh, especially along the west coast, out east, um, not so much in the interior regions, but there are a lot of islands. Most of them have a lot of trees on them. And of course, the only thing I'd be worried about with islands this day and age is uh, storms, uh, rising water levels, things of that nature. Uh, look what happened to Florida recently with the hurricane there. So you definitely want to be in a high enough position. But the prices for these islands, uh, it varies. You know, you can get some for a couple hundred thousand dollars. It goes all the way up to the multi millions of dollars. There's going to be a lot of islands in the northern boreal forest that are just considered crown land, but you're never going to be able to access them unless you have uh, some kind of uh, seaplane or something like that. You can basically go and make one of those islands your own and nobody would ever be none the wiser. Maybe, you know, a plane would fly over once every hundred years, but uh, that's all you'd have to worry about. So an island is definitely up there. Now, number one on my list is a safe house, which is built by developer Robert Knizny. This is a real building. This is not a concept house. This is the real thing. And it's a house which basically transforms and uh, it's a zombie house. Now, this is a pretty popular build. This story has been published all over the internet. You know, the best zombie proof home. This is basically at the top of everybody's list. And it really is at the top of mind too. Uh, the only thing, of course, you would have to outfit it with a lot of heavy duty armaments. You would want to get some kind of well water system. You could put sun tracking solar panels on the roof, turn that green space out there into pasture for some animals, uh, get a garden, get some watchtowers up there, and you pretty much got it made. So in its current state, I don't think it's the number one prepper's holdout. I think, you know, you get the Atlas guys in there, you get them to put a, a nice sized bunker down below. You get some military guys to come in there to optimize it for security. Get some experienced horticulturalists in there, some electricians in there with good experience with uh, so installing solar technology. And you're going to really be able to do a lot with this building. Let me know if there's some things on here that I've forgotten about. Now, I didn't include firearms within this list. Uh, that could probably be its own video in its own right. Top 10 prepper uh, fantasy firearms, if you will. Obviously, everybody wants a minigun. Not everybody has the half a million dollars it's going to cost to get one. And yes, there are about a dozen legal miniguns in the US in case you wanted to know it's a useless factoid there let me know what you think in the comments would be on your wish list thanks for watching don't forget to like comment subscribe Canadian Prepper out the best way to support this YouTube channel is to support yourself by gearing up through CanadianPreparedness.com or BugOutRoll.ca premium quality gear at the best possible price using the incredibly secure and easy to use Shopify platform we offer free shipping to the United States for orders over $200 USD and free shipping to Canada over $75. So support the channel by supporting yourself.